Hey guys, it's Dragon Critic, and today I'm reviewing Home Alone. So, well, this is the franchise review, and the film series is about a kid named Kevin who gets, well, left behind by an accident at home while the other family is going on their holidays for Christmas. Well, the other kids hate Kevin, but they accidentally forgot Kevin by an accident when they're going on their holiday. We see that there are robbers trying to break into their house while they're going on holiday, so Kevin does like a, a mysterious adventure on it. So, I'm not doing this review on my own. I'm doing it with a friend. And it's not Corey's reviews, it's not Miguel Navida, it's not Lego Fan 506, it's not Riley McCord. I am doing it with the Disney Nerd. Beginning the review in three, two, one. Thanks, Dragon Critic, for having me on. Hey guys, the Disney Nerd here. You might know me from some of the Dragon Critic's live streams, and yeah. So make sure that you subscribe to me, because I got a bunch of other reviews also, and that's what I do on my channel, just different movie reviews and stuff. Over to you, Dragon Critic. You're welcome, Disney Nerd, but now I'm going to talk about the effects. And the effects, they're actually not bad for a Christmas film. The effects are all pretty cool, well, and the camera work is decent. But this is a film that came out years ago, so what can you do? You cannot change the past, but you can change the future. Well, the first two movies have got really, really good effects, but let's talk about, well, the second film. The second film does pretty much have the same story as what we got in the first movie. Well, a good story, yes, but it's just set in New York to make the difference. And honestly, this should have been the last one. And the effects here are fantastic, again. Don't get me started with the other ones, just... Grrr. Damn, I hate the others. I love the first two movies, but Home Alone 3, 4, 5 suck. Major butt. And honestly, this one is close to beating the first movie. It's not as good as the first movie, but it is still a fantastic sequel. And the effects are pretty good. Now I'm going to go with the characters, but Disney Nerd is going to talk about them. So, on to you, Disney Nerd. The characters in the film. So, in the first film, you've got characters like Kevin and Buzz as the protagonist. Uh, Kevin is basically the kid that no one in the family really likes, but they have to deal with him anyways. And it's he's a really interesting and fairly funny character. Uh, too bad that the actor who played him actually died of drug overdose. But a very, very good character. And then you have Harry and Marv, who are the two antagonists of this film. They're basically burglars who try to get into... Uh, Kevin's house and fail miserably. Uh, Marv is hilarious. Uh, so is Harry. Harry is played by Joe Pesci. I forgot Marv's actor's name. But they're hilarious. They make... They probably make the second film more than the first one because the first one I actually really, really like and the second one I felt was more comedic and I think that Harry and Marv brought the comedy. Buzz. Uh, Buzz is basically like the main person in the family that interacts with Kevin, but it's in a negative way until the end of the movie. And so, yeah, he's a... He's... I don't care for the character too much, but he's barely in the film, in any of the films, actually. And he, uh... He's supposed to be mean, so I understand why he's a little bit of a jerk. The mom, she definitely cares for Kevin, so I definitely give her respect for that. And she actually acts like a mom would act if her son went missing. So that's a very well done job there. And then the rest of the family, I mean, you got people like the uncle that doesn't like Kevin. You got sweet little kids. You got the dad. And they're okay, I guess. They're not nothing spectacular, or they're not like making the movie worthy. 
And then in the third one, you've got Alex, who's the main character. Uh, same name as me, so I like him already. And he's a bit of a smarter version of Kevin. He kind of knows what's going on a little bit before Kevin does. Uh, but he doesn't get as much focus as Kevin did. I'm just going to stop you there. But honestly, I think the characters in number three are terrible. The first two, good. The third one, and the, and I mean the first two, good, well, great, like I said. The third, and the sequels, horrible. I'm just gonna stop you there, I'm gonna put you back on. And then you have the Russian spies, who were, uh, really funny in the third film. They probably made that film. And I don't remember much about the fourth or the fifth film. I know that Kevin was back for the fourth film, and I know there was a different cast in the fifth film, and I don't remember that. So, I don't have any room to talk on those movies. Yeah, but from what I remember from the th from the fourth and fifth dude, is that the characters and everything is horrible. The, four the fourth one and the fifth one are just garbage. Well, more power to you for liking number three. That's cool. I'm glad you liked it. But honestly, I just cannot stand the sequels. One and two, I just think are the good ones. The moral of the film... Oh my god, the moral of this film is so amazing. Uh, it's basically about being with family, and people don't always seem as they appear. It, that happens in 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, especially in 1 and 3. Uh, and that's because that's like the first time that we've seen them interact with another person outside of their family or Harry and Marv. And it's normally like the creepy neighbor across the street, or the mean old lady that down the street, or whatever. But, and they don't always appear as they seem. And it's just an amazing moral. It's also a great moral about being with family for Christmas. And it also shows that kids are way smarter than they seem, which is definitely true, at least in my case. You're right, the moral of, this fil of the films are fantastic. To me, I think number two is the most emotional moral because it's very well dramatic in a way it's emotional heartwarming and i think i might like to a bit more than one but i still prefer the first movie if you know what i mean on to you back the music the music is great in this film it's cheerful when it needs to be and it's also scary when it needs to be the music in this film it's phenomenal i love listening to the soundtrack over and over again so Yep, the soundtrack in this film and the series are fan is fantastic, and the soundtrack does know when to be emotional, scary, and uh, riveting, and very exciting, like in the action scenes. I just love soundtracks in movies like Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon. I just I love soundtrack in pretty much a lot of movies. So, overall, myself, I give the whole series an eight out of ten. Home Alone is a great series. It's got a few problems. I don't care for the pacing that much. But, hey, it's a good film series. It's got fantastic characters, fantastic plot. Just great, great classic Christmas movies. I highly recommend these. They're not my favorite Christmas films, but they're, they're up there, and I will definitely be watching them this Christmas. I would definitely give the first two movies 10 out of 10s and The Seal of Awesomeness. They're great films. But I would give the sequels 3, 4, and 5 The Seal of Rubbish, for sure. And they're just... I just can't stand the others, but I love the first two movies. So, that's all for me. Back to you, Dragon Critic. Thanks for joining me, Disney Nerd, and it was great fun doing this collaboration. Hope to do another collab with, collaboration with you in the future. So guys, don't forget to check out Disney Nerd. His channel will be the, in the link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this review. I'll see you guys next time. Skadoosh.